Welcome to my channel. Today we are going to continue chapter 2, capacitor and dielectric. So in this video, we will continue discuss on uh, 2.2, charging and discharging of capacitor. So example 4, consider the circuit show, show in a figure where C1 is 50 microfarad, C2 is 25 microfarad, V is 25 volt. Okay, so initially, C1 is first charged by a closed S1. Okay, so initially, uh, the C1 is connected with the battery. Okay, so initially, uh, this is the uh, battery. And when S1 is closed, meaning that this battery is connected to C1. Okay, so meaning that this C1 is charging. Uh, it's a charging process. Okay. So capacitor C1 first is uh, charged by a closed switch S. Switch S1 is then open. Okay, and then the charged capacitor is connected to the uncharged capacitor C2 by closing switch S2. Okay, so calculate the initial charge required by C1 and the final charge on each capacitor. Okay, so meaning here we need to find C1 uh, when it's charging and we want to find C1, C2 okay, when it's discharging. So initially, when switch S is closed, charging process is happen. Okay, after that, switch S1 is open and switch S2 is closed. So at that moment, C1 is connected with C2. So this is C1, this is C2 when switch S2 is closed. Okay, so this is just now switch S1. So when switch 1 opens, switch S is closed, meaning that this is actually the charging process because already disconnected with the battery. Okay, no more battery. Okay, so now we want to find C1 when it's charging process. So first one, we need to find C1 when it's charging process. No? So we can now find by using the equation Q1 equals to C1 V1, where C1 is equals to 50 microfarad, okay, here, and V1 is 25 volt, okay? So initial charge that stored in a C1 is 1250 microcoulomb. Okay, so this is the maximum charge that can store inside C1. Okay, after that, when S1 open, S2 close, at that moment, this actually is a discharging process. Okay, it's discharging process. Okay, so when S1 open, S2 close, C1 with the charge of 1250 microcoulomb of charge is stored inside C1 but at that moment Q2 is equal to 0. Uh, why we know it's 0? Because the uh, questions mentions that it's uncharged capacitance. Okay, so what happened here is C1 with the charge 1250 coulomb at that moment uh, V is equal to 25 volt. Okay, and uh, V2 is actually equal to 0 because there's no charge inside. So what happened is uh, there is a potential difference, uh, potential difference between C1 and C2. Okay, so C1 with the charge 1250 and a V is 25. So actually they are having a higher potential. Okay, so when there's a potential difference, okay, so when there's a potential difference, uh, the charge from C1 it will flow to C2. Okay, until equilibrium uh, potential achieved. Okay, until V1 equals to V2. So for this case, actually it is parallel. Okay. So we need to find everything in total first. Huh? So as we know that Q total is Q1 plus Q2, where Q1 is 1250 micro, Q2 is zero. So we know that Q total is equal to 1250 micro coulomb. Okay, and then uh, C total. Okay, C total because it's connected in parallel, so it's C1 plus C2, where C1 is 50 microfarad, C2 is 25 microfarad. Okay, therefore our C effective is 75 microfarad. Then we can find our V total. So where V total is equal to Q total over C total, 1250 microcoulomb over 75 microfarad. So micro micro we can sell. Therefore, the potential difference okay, when the equilibrium achieved is 16.7 volt. Okay, initially it's 25 volt. Okay, so why decrease becomes 16.7? Because the charge inside the capacitor C1 Okay, will uh, give, uh, okay, so the electron, the charge will give to the uh, capacitor C2, okay, until 
uh, equilibrium achieved until there's no potential difference between them. Okay, so initially it's 25 and uh, 0 volt. Okay, after equilibrium achieved, okay, when equilibrium achieved, our V1 here will become 16.7, here also 16.7, okay, meaning that equilibrium achieved. Okay, so when equilibrium achieved, meaning that there's no potential difference between uh, V1 and V2, okay, so it's equal to 0. At that moment, there's no potential difference huh? because at that moment, V1 is equal to V2 and it's equal to V total. 16.7 volt uh, because it's connected in parallel. Uh, that's why our V total is equal to V1 is equal to V2. Okay, so now we want to find uh, Q on uh, the remaining Q. Okay, the remaining Q at uh, C1. So Q equals to CV. C is uh, for C1 is 50 micro and V uh, is equal to 16.7 volt, no longer 25 volt because some of the charges already transferred to C2. So at that time, Q1, that store, still store inside C1, is equal to 835 micro coulomb. Okay, and Q2 is equal to C2, V2, where C2 is equal to 25 micro times 16.7. So at that time, C Q two after equilibrium achieved, it will receive four four hundred fifteen micro coulomb. Okay, or if you don't want to use this method, you actually can use C Q total equals to Q one plus Q two, where initially it's one thousand two hundred and fifty micro equals to eight hundred and thirty five micro plus Q two. Therefore, our Q two you will get four hundred and fifteen micro coulomb. Okay, so you will get the same answer with this one. Okay, either you can use the equations to calculate, or you just minus from uh, the total charged huh? okay so meaning that after uh equilibrium achieve okay uh c1 initially is store 1250 so now when the charge is transfer okay to uh transfer to c2 it will reduce to 835 okay however for q uh for c2 initially there's no charge inside but after charging process uh, after the charge flowed from c1 to c2 the charge will increase to 415 Okay, micro coulomb. So this is answer for example four. Okay, next we go to example five, where a ten microfarad capacitor is charged fully charged by uh, alternating current voltage six volt. Okay, twenty microfarad capacitor is charged fully by the uh, direct current voltage fifteen volt. The two capacitors are then connected to each other with positively and charged plate at both capacitors connected together and negatively charged plates connected together. Okay, so meaning that initially, okay, initially this capacitor, okay, so this is capacitor C1 with 10 microfarad is charged by 6 volt. Okay, and also C2, okay, uh, is charged by 15 volt. This is C2 with 20 microfarad. Okay, so when the charging process uh, happen, meaning that the charge that stored inside C1 is equals to C1 V1, where 10 microfarad times 6, so you will get 60 microcoulomb stored inside capacitor C1 where it's fully charged. Okay, so Q2 is equal to C2 V2, where C2 is 20 microfarad and V is 15 volt. Okay, therefore, we will get the charge that stored inside the capacitor C2 is 300 micro coulomb okay so this is when charging fully charging okay after that the battery is taken out so these two c1 and c2 are connected together okay when it's fully charged c1 and c2 connected together okay where c1 is 10 micro and c2 is 20 micro uh, q1 that stored inside is 60 micro and uh, q2 is equal to 300 micro okay so if uh, initially when they connect together actually there is a potential difference Okay, because for C1, actually the potential here is only equal to 6 volt. Okay, at that time, uh, and uh, V2 is equal to uh, 15 volt. Okay, so if you refer to the potential of uh, V1 and also V2, actually there's a potential difference. Okay, there's a potential difference between C1 and C2. So what happened is the charge inside C2, it will give to C1 until equilibrium achieved. Okay, so... So these are questions every time we need to find total first. Okay, so first we must find the total charge first, where the total charge uh, is equal to 60 micro plus 300 micro. Okay, so the total charge in this system is 360 micro coulomb. Okay, next we want to find the uh, C effective or C total, 
where is equal to C1 plus C2 one because the question mentioned positive with positive, negative with negative. So this is actually a parallel case. Okay, so C1 is actually 10 micro and C2 is 20 micro. So we found that C effective is 30 microfarad. Okay, after that we can find V total. Okay, so our V total here is actually equal to Q total over C total. So Q total is 360 micro and C total is 30 microfarad. Okay, so therefore our V total is equal to 12 volt. Okay, so meaning that after equilibrium achieved, V1 no longer 6 volt. Okay, it become 12 volt. Similar for V2, it will become 12 volt. Okay, because some of the charges already uh, flow to C1. Okay, so we want to find the final charge uh, stored inside the we want to find the final charge that's stored inside each capacitor. Okay, so initially we know that it's uh, equal to 60 and also 300. Now we want to find the new charges uh, after equilibrium achieved, after uh, there's no potential difference between C1 and C2. Okay, so since V total also equals to V1 and also equals to V2, so we can use Q1, okay? So we can find Q1 and Q2 after uh, equilibrium achieved. So our Q1, the new one, is C1, V1, where C is 10 micro and V1 is 12. So we will get 120 microcoulomb. And Q2, the new one, after equilibrium achieved, is C2, V2, where it's equal to 20 micro, V2 is 12. So we will get 240 microcoulomb. Okay, so if you total up 120 plus 240, you will total up, you still will get 360. Okay, it's just that the charge from Q2, it will give to... Uh, Capacitor 1. Okay, so that's why capacitor 1 uh, from 60 increased to 120. Okay, for C2, initially it's 300, but because of um, the uh, discharging happened, so it will reduce. Okay, they will give the charge to the C1, so it will reduce to 240 micro -coulomb. Okay, next we want to find, find the potential difference across the capacitor. So we know that our V total is actually equal to V1, equals to V2, and is equal to 12 volt. Okay, so this is the potential difference across each capacitor after equilibrium achieved. Okay, now we want to find the electric energy loss. Okay, after combining the two capacitors. Okay, so we need to find before and after. Okay, so before that, I will, okay, U before, they combine is half CV square, 1, 1 plus half C2, V2 square. Okay, so we substitute in the value. 10 micro, V1 is 6 square plus half, 20 micro and V2 is 15 volt. Therefore, U before the combine is 2.43 exponent negative 3 joule. Okay, so U after the combine is equal to, okay, this one U after is equal to half CV square plus half CV square. Okay, 1, 1. Okay, so we substitute. Uh, after the combine, C still remain unchanged, 10 micro, V1 become uh, 12 volt. Okay, remember to square and half, C2 is 20 micro and 12 volt square. Okay, so U after the combine is 2.16 exponent negative 3 joule. Okay, so this is after the combine. So the energy loss, okay, so the energy loss is equal to 2.16 exponent negative 3 minus 2.43 exponent negative 3 okay so you take after minus before final minus initial so you will get negative 0 0.27 exponent negative 3 joule okay so this is the energy loss okay negative here shows that it's lost huh? lost after combining the two capacitor okay next we go to example 6 in the rc circuit okay here the battery has fully charged the capacitor Okay, so this is the battery and this is the capacitor. So when T equals to zero, S is thrown from position A to position B. So when from A to B, meaning that the battery, okay, battery is disconnected. Okay, meaning that there's no battery, huh? or meaning that discharging process, okay, is happened. Huh? Because we already take out the battery, so discharging process will happen. Okay, the battery voltage is initially is 20 volt and the capacitance is one point. 0.2 microfarad. The current R is observed to decrease to 0.5 of the initial value in uh, 40 microsecond. Okay, so meaning that initially, okay, initially I 
For example, the value of i not is 100%. Okay, now after t equals to 40 microsecond, okay, our i becomes 0 0.5 i not. Okay, so it's actually discharging process. Okay, so now they ask us to find the value for r. Okay, so because this is a discharging process, so we can use the equations i equals to i naught exponent negative t over rc to find the value for r, huh, the resistance. Okay, so i when uh, after 40 microsecond is 0 0.5 i naught, so i naught still the same. Okay, exponent negative t after 40 microsecond over r, r is the value that we want to find, unknown. And C is 1.02 exponent negative 6. Okay, so I not I not we cancel. Okay, so we will get R equals to 57 ohm huh? because R is a resistor. Okay, next we want to find time constant tau equals to RC. R just now we already find 57 and C is equals to 1.02 microfarad. Therefore, time constant is equal to 5.8. Inside the capacitor is 7.3 exponent negative 6 coulomb. Okay, so that's all for this uh, subtopic. We will continue with the next video. We will discuss on dielectric. Okay, see you. Bye.